All right, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, my name is Omoje So Alfred, and this is Catalambano with the boss of all bosses. Um, last week, we actually looked at um, the difference between faith, all right, and pride. And of course, this week is actually a continuation of from where we stopped last week. And of course, to discuss that is Apostle. Apostle, welcome, sir. Thank you, Omoje So The Lord bless you. I love bless you too. Okay, so we are, you, you were saying something um, concerning our topic for last week, um, um, pride and, and, and um, pride and fit and we're saying that sometimes when a christian said something um and other people might look at it and say this is pride and some of times they look at it and say, this is fit we're continuing from there pastor so you were actually saying something before we call it to wrap for last week yes and we say that faith is having trust and confidence in god while we say pride is having trust and confidence in oneself or in one's accomplishment. Because we're talking about the difference between faith yeah. and pride. And if faith is having trust in God, and pride is having trust in oneself or in one's accomplishment, then we say there's a big difference between these two. Faith is a blessing. Okay. Pride is a sin. Oh, okay. Yes, I just summarized the difference. Okay, so, so I, I, I do you explain it when you say faith is a blessing and pride is a sin? Why is pride a sin and why is faith a blessing? Yes, he said, for the transgression of the law is sin. Okay. That's what the Bible tells us. Okay. The transgression of the law is sin. Now, faith, Christ said, if you could have faith like the mustard seed, you can mm. say to this mountain, move. Okay. Like we said, faith is in accordance to the word of God to uphold. Okay. That we have faith and trust in him and lean not in our own understanding. Okay. Pride, as I said, is believing and trusting and having confidence in oneself or in one's accomplishment. Okay. I said, that shall have no other gods before me or beside me. So having trust and faith in God is a blessing. And having pride in yourself in your goals, in your achievement, is a sin mm -hmm. because God does not accept the sacrifice of fools. He mm -hmm. does not. Mm -hmm. Now, when, when we look at that, now pride, you know, like I said the other time, I said when pride comes in, the individual, about 80% of the individual does not know mm -hmm. when it comes in. It's mm -hmm. people around you that notice that it's like pride is creeping in. Mm -hmm. And I said that one of the signs you should know is that by that time, you don't want to listen to any other person. Okay. It's only what you say. Right. Any other person that's anything contrary is like, is on the opposite side. Right. And I say pride is egocentric. It's mm. self-ego. If it's not you, then no other person. Mm. And also, I'm trying to talk about signs now. Yeah. And also, when pride comes in, it makes you to look at things being done by your leader as not doing it well. Okay. That you can do better than your leader. Right. So the moment you start thinking that you can do better than your leader, you won't take instruction from your leader anymore. Because okay. you feel that you can handle the sin better. well. In the military, that's what they'll say, mutiny starts creeping in. Mm. So the uh, same thing that Satan looked at God and said, he wants his throne to be a cell above the throne of God. Okay. Because if it's, because when we talk about pride, we are looking at the Lucifer, where it's origin, they originated. Mm. Uh, we are looking at the origin of pride. Mm. Yes, and, and, you know, in the book of First Peter, chapter 5, verse 5, he said, God is pride. Mm. He said, God opposes pride. Okay. He opposes it. And when he opposes it, he said, but he gives grace to the humble. All right. The humble is he that has faith. Okay. The humble does not have pride, he has faith. Mm. So he gives grace. So now by grace, the person, the humble now prevails. Right. But by pride, one falleth. Because say pride, for, uh, pride goes before a fall. Oh, yeah. So one falleth. Mm. So in this case, when we look at pride, as we said, that uh, Lucifer was the first person. He wanted his throne to be, uh, uh, to be that, uh, 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 his throne above that of God. Yeah. And 
That is what everybody that pride comes in. You want to lead, you want to be the leader. You don't want to follow the leader. Now I'm breaking down to also to our church cycle. Yeah. And also to company cycle, yes, to a working place cycle. So the moment you start thinking that you can do better than the leader, you can do better than the person in charge. Know that the spirit of pride has already coming in. Oh. And also, when it's time for you to need advice, you don't want to take advice from anybody. Time you need help, you don't want to take help from anybody. It's also signs of pride creeping in. Mm. That you just feel that you are all alone. You can do it all by yourself. Remember in the book of Daniel chapter 4, and he said to Nebuchadnezzar, and he had it loud, he said, let the storm of the tree be left. Mm. And when the interpretation came to him, he said, because at the time, you are going to realize that God is the omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscience. Mm. So when that realization comes back to you, your kingdom shall be restored back to you. Okay. So there is also provision for one who has fallen out of pride yeah. or in pride. Mm. When you realize that God is the Almighty, yes, there is a restoration. Okay, now let, let's look at um, in the part where, uh, because when, when you talk about um, you being um, being not disrespectful to your subordinate, like now you are saying, okay, um, I can do this more than my leader. I'm good at this more than mine. Uh, maybe my boss in the office. Now, in the sense where you know that, okay, let's assume that um, your boss is trying to do something, or he's doing it, or he or she is actually doing it wrong, well, like in the church, for instance, or, or I, the the choir coordinator is not bringing in the main key and you understand the key more better than him, what is the best way for you to approach that situation uh, that does not look as if you're being pride, um, you're being proud or putting an ego on? Yes, thank you, Omar Jesu. Well, like, today now we are pushing the pride and faith to a different perspective. Yeah. And we are narrowing down to the church. Yeah. Now, in such scenario, yes, you have this idea and better than the leader. Okay. It's also supposed to be an open confrontation. Right. Somebody who is humble because they say, God, give your grace to the humble. All right. Is to call a leader aside, not openly. At worst, is giving openly. Rebuke. Most times, major, majority of the time, rebuke is done secretly. Okay. I call the leader and say, please, at least I have this idea. I want to sell it out. Not going confrontational to correct its leader. There's no leader that will take it from you that you are giving open co confrontation of correction. It's, it's an insubordination. Okay. So, as you said, yes, the person, the junior has the right to call, maybe create an atmosphere. You must create an atmospheric condition that is conducive, that the leader will not see it as an insult. Okay. You must be able to create that. If you are not able to create that, then the gift you have is not valuable. Okay. Because if truly you have such gift, the God of all wisdom that give it to every man without will also give you the wisdom on how to address it. Okay. So what about if you do that and the leader do not take your advice? I think this is where a lot of issues is. Yes. Sometimes uh, you will see some followers say, okay, he doesn't listen. Okay. And each time he said, let him do this or let's do this. And the leader is not listening. He doesn't take advice. Or maybe he decided not to take that your advice. All right. Now tell me, how do you manage that situation? Yes. You know, the Bible said, in all things, we should respect our leaders. Okay. And subject ourselves to those in authority. All right. If he does not listen to you, does not mean he's not a good leader. Okay. If he does not merit it, God will not allow. I said, promotion comes from God. Okay. Does not come from the east or west. It okay. comes from God. Okay. But the fact that the leader is there and you have your advice you give, he does not listen. Mm. Yes, there are some leaders like that. We agree to that. Okay. But the Bible does not say you should cause re uh, revolution or rebellion. Oh because it says the sin of rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Mm. So the moment you do that, you are likened to a witchcraft. We say, suffer not a witch to live. Mm -hmm. So if the leader finds out, you are supposed to be suffered not to stay there. Oh. The leader will do everything to pull you out. Okay. Because it's a sin of rebellion. Oh. Which is a sin of witchcraft. Oh. So if the leader does not listen, relax. Oh. You just be an obedient follower. Do, you do your own slot. Because okay. everybody has a function in a team. Okay. You keep doing your own. Allow the leader to do his own. Oh. One day, his tenure will come to an end. Okay. And if you serve well, you might be raised 
okay. to that position, okay. like David and Saul. Okay. So you now have your time to showcase yourself. But while the leader is there, don't do anything to put the leader down. Mm. Support the vision and run with his vision. Okay. By so doing, because if you are not a good follower, you cannot be a good leader. Mm. So that must come to the person's head first. You must be a good follower to be a good leader. Now, talking about being a good lead, uh, follower, let, let's focus more on that because I think uh, most of the time when we have issues in our various churches is the fact that, oh, okay, the A does not list him and of course the B also claim that, oh, I know more than him and um, and uh, why is he acting the way he's acting and stuff like that. Uh, so, but how will you be a good follower? All right, how will you be a good follower. We have some persons that all they know how to do is just to give advice. All right. Now they give advice, but they don't know how to do the work. All right. And they go back to say, oh, I said it before. All right. So if I want to be a good follower, beyond giving an advice, what more can I do that will make me relevant? to my subordinates. Thank you. You just asked a technical question. Beyond giving advice, what else can you do? Yeah. Now, remember that the primary function of every individual in the household of God mm. is not to give advice, it's to serve. Okay. Service to God and service to humanity. All right. Those are the two laws. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your might. And the second is like unto you, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So it's service to God and service to humanity. So your primary thing is to serve. That is it. Not the advice. The advice is secondary. That's okay. why the leader can take it or not to take it. Right. But the service is a continuous process. Mm. You must keep serving until the last day, mm. which every man's work shall be tried. Your mm. work shall be tried. The leader's work shall be tried. Mm. The leader's work will not be inputted for you. Okay. Neither will your work be inputted for the, the leader. leader yeah. It's your own work. Okay. Not being put for you. Oh, wow. So why not keep doing your work and forget the advice? Mm. Remember that the leader, if it's in the house of God, the leader take advice from God. Mm. The Bible said, I'm going and I'll send you the comforter and the comforter shall teach you all things. Okay, yeah. You are not named a comforter. Okay. I mean the advisor. Yeah. They are not named comforters. Okay. The comforter is the Holy Ghost. Okay. So why not? Why do the function of the Holy Ghost? Yeah. Why knowing more than the Holy Ghost? Mm. Now remember in the book of Luke, in the Transfiguration, and Peter said to him, the disciples said to him, let's build three temples here. Mm. One for Elijah, one for Moses, okay. and one for you. Yeah. They were giving, that is a good advice. Mm. You know, if it's me and you today, we we'll want a temple for us. Yeah. Because the temple is like a memorial. Mm. A memorial which will later can become an archive of museums. Mm. So, but what he, he said, but they had a, a cloud covered there and said, this is my beloved son, listen to mm. him. Who is the leader? Christ. Okay. And God said, this is my son. Listen to, to the leader. Mm. You understand? You are the subordinate. So listen to him. Don't tell him what to do. Mm. Just, that is the mistake most of us do in church. We want to advise the pastor. Oh, wow. We want to advise the bishop. Mm. We want to advise the pope. And mm. say, so it does not take. Mm. How can he be taken from God and be taken from you? What? <laughs> someone called him. He's a servant of someone. Yeah. God said to Moses, mm. Aaron will be your prophet. Mm. And you will be a God. Unto, unto Pharaoh. Okay. And when Aaron and Miriam climbed to an height, mm. they became advisor to Moses. Mm. But when God came at the tent of the tabernacle, what happened? Miriam was filled with a plague of leprosy. Mm. And the polymer also to go to Aaron. Aaron quickly begged Moses. And because God said to them, Miriam, Aaron, I talk to you people in dreams. But Moses, my servant, I talk to him face to face. He is the leader. Mm. Listen to him, because mm. they're already creating revolt, rebellion in the camp mm. of okay. Israelites. Yeah. Then Aaron and Miriam, they were one side. Moses was one side. Mm. But God said, listen to him. Mm. And, he, and when Moses, Aaron begged Moses, he said, please beg God for Miriam. And Moses, because he's a, a man of a meek heart, he went to beg God. And God said, if a father spat on a child, would he not, child not stay out? So let us stay out for some days. Okay. Then after I can go and offer the sacrifice of cleansing for leprosy, yeah. I should be clean. So what is God teaching us as believers? You might know more than the leader. Mm. You might know more than the pastor. But know that somebody gave you that wisdom to okay. know more than. Mm. So listen to him because he gave you the wisdom to know more than the leader. 
But he didn't place you as a leader. Yeah. He placed the leader there. Yeah. There must be a purpose. Okay. Your duty is to listen to that leader. Mm. And Ahithophel was wise. Mm. But he was not the king. Okay. King David was a king. Mm. King David knew Ahithophel has a lot of wisdom in him. He knew that. So, if he was, Ahithophel was fit for the leadership, God would have made Ahithophel the king of Israel. Mm. Not David. Mm. But he was placed for a function. So the leader, the, the, the advisor can never be above the leader. And the day the leader, David prayed and said, God, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. He said, in the voice of a king is an authority, is a command. Mm. And only that prayer point, mm. the wisdom changes to foolishness, foolishness. as he has demanded. Yeah. So the leader is always the leader. He has authority. Mm. He has the power and voice of authority by God. Listen to him. All right, of course, mm. the leader is always the leader. He has the power and, of course, and the authority from God. So you listen to him. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, of course, um, this one time, I will always want to pray for more time, more time, more time. Uh, but we, we still have to call it a wrap, okay, because of time is really not on our side. But before we do that, we want our pastor to give us a detail, um, summary first and a detail of how we can worship alongside with him. Okay, over to you, Pastor. Thank you, Mojesu. Mm -hmm. Say a difference between faith and pride. Pride goes before a fall. Pride is a sin. Faith is a blessing. In all that getting, get understanding, get wisdom. If you get understanding and wisdom, you know that yes, it's all right for us to depend on God, total dependence and not leaning on our own understanding. Mm -hmm. We are a touch from God Ministries, located at number seven, Minish Inda Street, Elimbu, Port Arcot. Uh, these are services are Tuesdays. 8 a.m. to 12 noon is our fasting and praying time, and our counseling time is 12 noon to 4 p.m. And every Friday is an evening with the Lord, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., with an exception of every second and last Friday of every month, which is a night with God, a tag, a tarry night, a night with God, an exceptional night, a night of signs and wonders, healings and miracles that you come, you don't go back the same. And our Sunday services are gracious services, the first service 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., and the second is 10 a.m., to 12 noon. Come expectant and you won't go back the same. The Lord bless you as you do so in Jesus' name.